Welcome back to Bee Monster Laboratory. Today I'm going to review a three-in-one construction truck that converts into a bulldozer and a backhoe and a steamroller. And it can be operated using this remote control. Let's begin. We love battery operated toys, especially remote control toys. It's been a while since I've done a little kid remote control toy review. And these are the types of toys that got my own kids at least somewhat interested in electronics and how things are built. And I received an email from an Amazon seller asking if I would review this. So I thought it's battery operated, it's remote controlled. Some of y'all have asked about toys like this, so let's take a look at it. Real quick, uh, first impressions about this thing is that uh, it's very durable. It seems like it's not flimsy and flexible. It's solid. It has good collar, which I like. And I like the textured, it's kind of like a rubber textured wheel. And it helps prevent sliding as much on smooth surfaces. As you can see, it's not that smooth plastic that allows it just to slide all over the place. So that's nice. Good quality wheels. So right out of the box, it's mostly put together that the wheels were already attached and some of the attachments were already screwed together, like the, uh, the bucket arm here, it was already attached and the steamroller was already put in and, and screwed in and attached and uh, this uh, bulldozer piece here was already screwed together. But there is some attaching we need to do and we'll go ahead and do that real quick. These are the screws that you get in the box for the toy. And you can see the threading on them. They go in very nice and they actually hold pretty tight. I like the screws. We'll take the, the seat here and put it on the chassis and we'll flip it over. This is the motor and battery compartment. This is your motor and battery. We'll talk about that in just a second. But for now, let's go ahead and screw that seat into place with one of our little plastic screws here. Now this is a manual screwdriver here and it comes with a flathead option and uh, kind of like a Phillips head option here. So we'll go ahead and just do the flathead. You got to stick it in the hole there and you can easily use this screwdriver to screw that seat into place and it holds very snug actually. I'm impressed. The next thing you'll want to do is go ahead and grab the cab here and uh, the roof has already been put on, screwed on, but let's attach it to the top here. We'll want to keep this in place by attaching the back end here on the chassis, on the frame. You do that by first putting this on and then putting this on over top of it and you'll see that it fits right into these grooves right here and holds it down. If you flip it over, you can see the hole right there where you put your screw in and that'll hold the back end on. So let's go ahead and do that. And that should be the only time you need to mess with those screws, unless you take the whole thing apart, which you could totally do and put back together just for fun. The front is a little bit loose, but we haven't attached our front piece yet. That will keep it all rock solid and attached firmly. But first, let's take a look at this piece here in the front. This is for sound effects, and it goes right here in this little pocket in the front. And if you press that button, you get sound effects. It's basically the same sound effect over and over, but let's see what kind of battery it takes. For this, you'll need a very small Phillips head screwdriver, 
And if you open it up, you can see that it takes three of those button batteries, the LR44 batteries. I've put the cover back on this thing. I'm gonna put it back in the truck and uh, there it will stay and forever make sounds, I suppose. All right, let's put the bucket on the front here. If you look at the picture, the Baco has the solid yellow uh, front over the grill here. For all your attachments, there are two tabs here on either side. And we're gonna take the cover that goes over the front and connect them to those tabs. Place the cover over the front here and we'll put the large screw in there to hold it in place. And it does a pretty good job of doing that. So once that's in place, it's very sturdy. It's not going anywhere. The arm does bend. There are three different front pieces to attach. This is uh, exactly how you attach every one of them. Before you attach the battery pack and motor, I just want to show you if you flip it all the way up, that is remote control, and you can operate it with your remote control. But uh, you can also just do forward and backward um, by sliding the sliding this little tab to the different arrows here. You have forward and then off and then backward. This does run on two AA batteries and you'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver to to get this out as well. And you can see here that it uh, takes two AA batteries. If you turn the wheel just a little bit you can see the rotation of that white piece in there. So to put the battery pack in and the motor you just slide it in just like that. If it doesn't fit right away, just turn that wheel a little bit and it'll sink, it'll sink right in there. Then you want to push this down until you hear a snap. And that way you know it's in place and you're ready to go. So about the remote control, it is a little bit small and you'll click these buttons right here forward and backwards and the power button is right here as well. Turn it on, turn it off. It does take two AA batteries and you'll need that same small Phillips head screwdriver to access the battery co compartment here. And it just slides right back on there. I have tested the remote control up to 20 feet. It does respond very well and very quick. It is 2.4 gigahertz. So I would expect it to, to at least respond within 20 feet. Now there's an option to use a power drill with this. What you're gonna do is take the motor out of the bottom of your truck here and you're gonna place uh, either one of these attachments in here like the Phillips head screwdriver attachment and you have to push it down pretty hard for it to snap into place and you can do that just by turning it over and pushing it down and we're going to slide it right into the top of this and the thing about this is that you don't use the buttons here to operate forward and backward you have to flip it forward and backward up here for it to work. It's kind of inconvenient, but it does the job. We can go ahead and unscrew one of these screws on this uh, truck here, and to take it off, we'll hit the back arrow here. So the trick is, so the trick is to go ahead and start it up before you put it in place here. So you want to start it, then uh, sink it into your into your screw. I guess that's the trick. It was a little bit easier than putting it in place and then hitting the button, but I guess you can do whatever, however you like. So once you're done with that, you turn it off, and then to get this out, you want to hit this uh, this little tab back here. You want to press it down. It will release it. So there is a manual screwdriver. And it's basically a rectangle piece here with a deep hole on that side. I'm not sure what that's for, but uh, you're gonna place one of your attachments, whichever one you wanna use, in the front here. It does just snap into place without falling out. And then you can just use it manually. So the wide handle does make it easy to operate. You can twist it easily, so that shouldn't be an issue for anybody. Now there's a steamroller option. This looks like a steamroller and a bucket for a bulldozer option here. It's going to take this little attachment that just goes over the top. This little attachment is just going to go over the top here. And then it's attached pretty well. It's not going anywhere. That is a solid attachment, by the way. 
Well, I had some help playing around with this uh, with my son. He uh, is a little too old for it. It's definitely for the age three to five range, but there definitely are some things to like about it. And one of those things would be the durability. This thing will survive a three or four year old playing with it. You can tell that the parts are good quality. The material is good quality. Everything fits together nicely. And you just don't run into those problems, or at least I didn't, when putting this thing together. And the remote control that it comes with, it does have a strong signal and it's very responsive for up to right around the 20 foot range. So that's very impressive for something like this. And I like the idea of the power drill option, taking the motor out and putting it in the remote control. I don't think it's all that practical, but I think the little guys are really going to get a kick out of that. And the parts are large and easy to use. You don't have to have good dexterity to build this thing. So that's also another plus in my book. Some of the things I didn't like included a weak motor. It couldn't run over things I felt like it should get over. And it didn't matter whether you put in fresh batteries or not, it still got hung up on carpet and sand. And it only goes forwards and backwards. There's no option to turn left or right. A stronger motor and more control options would really make this thing stand out. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Let me know what you think about the video in the comments below. And until next time, take care.